Today we're going to work on some digital artwork. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going to be talking about digital sketchbooks and how to create digitally. So for today's class, we're going to be using our Chromebooks to work on some digital sketches. Now, if you have a Chromebook because of the whole quarantine thing, you have access to a wonderful free sketchbook without having to go deep into the internet and finding something or going through the Chromebook extensions because it should be built into your Chrome extension already. Uh, for my teacher friends out there, if you guys know that your students don't have this already on their Chromebook, email your IT department, try and get them to push it onto those devices. It's a free app. There is no issues with it. It's embedded into the Chrome, it's embedded into the Chrome software. So it's, it's very user friendly. So when I started researching some of the parts of the program, this should be embedded into, I think it's Chrome 76, which I think is the relatively newish version. So it should be already on the system. So you just got to find it sometimes. So to get there, we're going to use our handy dandy Chromebook. Once you're on your main screen here, once you're on your main screen, you're going to thumb up until you get to the app that's right here. It's the Google Canvas. It's a little blue circle. It's got that painter palette in it. We're just going to tap on that. And it's going to open up our handy dandy little sketch pad of what we can draw with. Now, I do know up front that I have a number of teachers out there who their students that have a Chromebook don't have a touch screen Chromebook. Guess what? You can still do this and there's no issues with it. One of the things I found in research is if you use the thumb pad to draw with, you can totally draw with it just fine without any issues um, that like you would normally draw on the screen with. You're going to hover over the keypad with your stylus or whatever you're drawing with, and you're going to have it placed on there. You're not pressing on there at all. You're just going to place, place your finger on there, place your stylus. Then with the other finger, you're going to press it into the bottom corner, press and click. Now it's active and it's going to draw the line of wherever your finger is on the touchpad. That's how these things work. It's all about the touch integration, how these things are connected. So don't worry if you, if you, if you got it. Now with styluses, usually most of us have a pen stylus that we are, that we've got somewhere. If you've ever done one of those like craft fairs and people are passing out pens, sometimes you get a funky pen that has this little rubber grommet on the end of it. That's a stylus and you can use it to draw with. It works great. For those of us that don't have that, have that, you can make one DIY version. So let's go into that. So for the DIY version, we're going to take a pencil, a Q-tip and a little bit of foil. What you're doing is you're creating a point of contact between the end of the Q-tip and your hand. Why do you need the foil? Because the electricity that's inside of your hand has to travel down the aluminum foil to the Q-tip and the Q-tip is what mark makes the mark on the screen. So what I've done is take the Q-tip, take the pencil, put those two together, take the foil, wrap it around it, kind of like a band-aid. Then what I do is because I always have a drink sitting next to me, I'm going to take my Q-tip dip it in a little bit of water and now it has the activator you want it just barely damp you don't want it like sopping wet and you're just like flicking off a bunch of water now you can hold the pen like a normal pencil uh or or use it like a brush that's how i was mainly using it so like when i'm making a mark i'm making marks out and away from me that gave me the best uh contact in the way that i draw so don't think of it as a normal drawing element so uh one caveat that i gotta say is while you're drawing on this and you're drawing across the screen because it's such a wide surface and we have a tendency to lay your hand down get a sock or something to cover these couple fingers and literally you just put a sock on your hand and you have the this part cut off and you just draw like normal. So use an old dirty sock. Uh, they do sell these uh, little sleeves. It's like a drawing sleeve on Amazon for like 20 bucks, but I can do the same thing with a sock that has a hole in it. So I'm not gonna waste money. The app itself is really user-friendly. This is a pretty simple interface. You have a flat, nice big drawing space and on the side you have all of your tools. So going over the tools here, you have your color at the top. So if we hit color, Go into that, you have your base level of color selections that you're going to pick. Under these base level colors, again, it's like, I think it's like 25 different colors, 30 maybe. Um, so you can pick that, or you can go to custom and get the a full range of the range of the color gamut through that and pick the color that you need. Below that, we're going to go with the size and opacity scales. 
For size and opacity, the size gives you how thick or thin the brush is going to be and the opacity how light or dark that color is going to be. This is highly important because as you're drawing, you want to make lighter marks first and then bringing them up heavier. That's how we normally draw in classes as it is. We want to make sure that we're drawing the same way when we're drawing on these tablets. Uh, below that you have your, you have a pencil, you have a pen, you have a marker, you have the, like a content crown, pastel, uh, and finally an eraser. Lots of things to use. I've found that when you're writing and if you're doing notes or if you're doing little bits of, uh, note taken in the margins, use the pen. It works the best. Don't use the pencil. It's atrocious. Reason being is because if you start making these marks, you can see that the pencil itself, it's not a solid line. It's not a hard level of graphite. You're going to have these breaks inside the pencil. Again, these are digital elements. Uh, but with the pen, you have a nice fluid line the whole time and it works really simple. I like it a lot. It works a lot better. Marker I use for the coloring aspect. Uh, the contact crown, I really don't really care for in general, just because it's that like chalky. It's like, here's a, here's some color. Here's a little more color. It's, there's like these holes. I don't like it. Um, but then changing up the scale and opacity that helps a lot too. Now the top right hand corner, you add layers. So if you're used to Photoshop and drawing in that or thinking of it, painting in different layers at a time, this isn't going to be too difficult for you, but it was for some of my students where I had to tell them, draw a little bit here, add another layer, then add another element. Reason being is because as we're adding more layers and more elements, if you have some sort of base drawing down there first, but you don't want to see it at the end of the drawing, putting that in one color, drawing it up and then tracing it in the other layers, you can then delete the lower layers. So you have a nice clean finish image. I don't think you can move the pe the layers around to one on top of another, which would have been really nice uh, when we were doing a mandala design. Uh, so I had my students where they were making the pieces and I wanted them to keep redrawing. They had to keep redrawing those elements of mandala over and over again as they kept putting color in there. Because when you put the color over the line, sometimes you won't see the line. So then they'd have to draw another layer and redraw those lines. Yeah, you can put one at the top and then just keep adding your colors in. The issue was is that as they were going up, they needed to get those little bits of detail. So they were drawing that mandala like six or seven times. It became really monotonous and even I started to hate the project at that point. So when you're making these things, try and figure out a way to do your layers in a sequential way where you're not doing as much work that becomes more problematic. All right. And this is a great free app that you can use that should be baked into most Chromebooks nowadays. So if you don't have a Chromebook and you're working at home, you also have access to the Chrome browser and you can put it in the browser and you can work in it like a normal paint, but you're using it solely in the web browsing experience. It works fine. The big issue that most of us are going to run into when you're dealing with that is that you don't have a drawing tablet. If you need a recommendation, Wycom is the best. I, I have a bamboo tablet by them. I know it's around here somewhere. Wycom tablet. So let's, let's do an unboxing thing. So I haven't opened this one yet. Okay. Ooh. Hmm? So Wycom tablets, the reason I like them the most is because the little pins that they use. Um, what's so super awesome about them is this nib, as they call them, uh, is very sensitive and it's got a little clicky. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a little clicky feature there that makes it, um, it, it picks up really thin, uh, really soft motion so as you're making your marks on your tablet it picks them up really easily and it's not it's a it's just a wonderful device most of these are um non uh you don't have to charge it uh it totally works based upon the connectivity level of the nib and how it and how they interact that's one of those things that i love is where you don't have to charge an additional thing like the apple pencil which it's it's like you're paying 30 bucks for a piece of plastic i'm sorry that's that's not a good buy. Um, so on your tablet here, if you got if you got the Wycom tablets, they have buttons at the top that are going to be interactive buttons, so you can easily change between the pen, the pencil. You can you can hot link them all, which is nice. Uh, again, these ones usually cost about I think this one's like forty bucks for this, so it's a it's an investment. It's not it's not just a 
cheap piece of plastic that you're, that you're using here, but um, they work really well. I like the I like how you can draw with them. They're great. You again, same same principles at stake here, where you're putting down to establish where the mark is in space, and then once you click, is when it'll start to draw. It only works when you're when you're doing when you do a click motion. Um, again, you can set these up however you want to. You can put paired this with a regular computer if you have the. It was behind me. If you have a Chromebook, it works just the same. Um, the thing that I love about this is that you can do so much in, in this one little app. I love how I can even, let's see if I hit the home button here, I can go through and I've got several different drawings that I've done where my students can then, let's go into our little bit of pottery. We can set up what we're gonna be building. So this was for our uh, module origami that we're building and you're creating these different spaces and taking little bits of notes. So again, you just click on the different tool that you need and you can just go in there and just draw however you want. But, oh, let's say we made a mistake, erase it, take it away, no issues. Um, now, when you're doing this again, you you can bring in other pictures if you wanna bring in, let's go and hit the home button again uh, and I'll bring in a picture out of my own sketchbook that let's say I wanted my kids to work off of. I can then email them that picture out of my own sketchbook. You can then draw on top of it in the different layers that you have available. Again, we want to make sure that as we're drawing that you're not drawing on parts that you need to see or don't need to see. So we can just add in those little elements and take away whatever we need or don't need at the time. Super user friendly, super versatile, Take a look at it, experiment, have fun. Just a nice little tool that I found that I thought you guys would also appreciate. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of the homework, the end of class as we usually do. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, share as part of your homework, get the message out there as many people as we possibly can. And if you have a uh, question, comment, or concern, raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Happy drawing and, uh, and learn something new. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. Later guys.